and we have 48 of you on the call. So that's awesome. Uh, it's halftime. Uh, we are six weeks into our 12 week challenge, which means we're at halftime. I love halftime. And one of the things that I would love for you to do, here's a challenge, is make a post on Facebook and let everybody know how you're doing on your goal for how many listings you were going to take in the first 12 weeks of 2021 and hashtag it. If somebody could type this in the chat, that would be awesome. Hashtag survive to thrive 12 week listing challenge. Hashtag survive to thrive 12 week listing challenge. Post that on Facebook. Let everybody know how you're doing. Uh, it's great accountability, guys. And you may, this may be something that you're excited about doing because you're tracking and that's fun. And it, then again, it may be something that's not fun because you're not tracking. And that's okay because there is nothing less significant in life than the score at halftime. You still have a second half. That's your proof of hope. As long as there is life in front of you, that is your proof of hope. All you have to do is go out in the second half and kick butt. So wherever you are, don't lose sleep over this. Just be determined to go do what you need to do in the second half in order to hit your goal because it doesn't matter what the score is at halftime. The only thing that matters is where you are at the end of 12 weeks. All right, I'm in the MREA book today and I am on page 99 and I'm at the very bottom of the page and Gary is talking about lead generation and here what, here's what Gary has to say. If I told you there was an out of town buyer who just got in this morning and who will be paying cash and needs to purchase a home by the end of the week, could any of you help them? If I told you Angel, there was a buyer in town, out of town, and they're going to buy a home. They need to buy a home by the end of the week. Could you help them? Absolutely. Of course you could. Now, yep. here's something that's so cool, guys. And I know this for a fact. I know that anytime you are in a group of people, whether it's 10 people or 100 people or 1,000 people, at least 10% of them are going to be involved in a real estate transaction this year. Now, I'll prove it. We've got 50 people on the call. If you bought a car in the last 12 months, just type in the chat, I did. Just type in the chat, I did. Now, watch all the I dids. If I was a salesperson for JM Lexus here in, in South Florida, and I just called every single one of you, and I said, hey, John Dietz, rockstar salesperson for JM Lexus, and I'm calling just to see if you or anybody you know is looking to purchase a new car in the next 12, in the next 12 months. Would I get leads? Yes, I would. However, none of those people are gonna call me and say, hey, just wanted to let you know I'm thinking of buying a car. Mm -hmm. You've gotta pick up the phone and make the call. Success is simple and it's not easy. You might have to call the entire phone book to find somebody who's ready to list their house. But if that's what it takes, then do that. Do I sound passionate about this? Yes. I am, because it's your success that's on the line. It's your career that's on the line. It's your family that's going to benefit from this. And I'm, I'm passionate about you. Hold on one second. My phone's ringing. Good, it's off because otherwise you would hear ducks quacking. All right. Here's what Gary goes on to say. Everyone would raise their hand. Everyone would raise their hand too. If I told you there was a buyer in town who needed to buy a home, could you help them? Everybody in the room would raise their hand. He goes on to say on the next page, I can guarantee you there is a buyer getting in town getting into town today who has cash and needs to buy a house now. The problem is we don't know where or who this buyer is. And that is the leads challenge of the real estate business. Now he goes, to go, he goes on to say, in a prosperous market, when things are good, there are usually many agents 
relying on passive lead generators, casual referrals, and luck to create business. I call this lead receiving. Mm -hmm. Are you in the business of lead generation or are you in the business of lead receiving? Unfortunately, real estate agents who are in the business of lead receiving may find themselves selling very few homes when the market shifts. Now, market shifts, market shifts, market shifts. You guys are probably thinking, I'm sick and tired of hearing about market shifts. Things are hot. What are you talking about? There's more than one way for the market to shift. Are you having a hard time finding listings right now? A little. If you're working with buyers, are you writing multiple offers on properties to get those, pro get those buyers under contract? Yes. Are you getting tired of being one of 20 offers on every property you write an offer for? Those are, that's, that's a market shift. Mm -hmm. Hello? Prices don't have to go down for it to be a market shift. You're going to read article after article after article that prices are going to continue to go up in 2021, and they probably will. And we're still in a market shift. Now, if we don't figure this listing thing out, here's what you're going to see. I'll tell you the market shift you're going to see. You're going to see agents jumping out of the business. <laughs> Michael Topo says good. <laughs> oh. Okay, so I agree, just not anybody on this call. How's that? Or anybody that's a part of my organization. How's that? Yeah, cool. All right. Conversely, if you actively and systematically focus on lead generating through direct prospecting and marketing activities, you will always be doing the best you can, even in shifting markets. If you count on the market to deliver leads when times are good, you better count on it to take them away when times are bad. When I was in production in 2004, five and six, I had a prospecting based business. I was on the phone making calls every day. I was doing what I tell you to do on this call every day. And I wasn't doing it because I was smart. <laughs> I was simply doing it because that's what it says in the book. It was also because I couldn't afford to pay a lot of money for marketing. Now, what was interesting is, and I didn't even pay attention that this was happening, what was interesting is as the market started to shift, I was taking 12, 15, 20 listings a month. We were selling more and more homes even though the market was moving backwards. And prior to this happening, the Dietz team wasn't on anybody's radar. And by 2008, we were in the top 10 in our MLS. It was because we were doing what Gary says in the book. We were not lead receiving. I was not sitting there waiting for my phone to ring. I was on the phone actively prospecting every day. And so were all of the agents on our team. The stuff works. All right, so Gary goes on to say, do you have enough leads that if you close them properly, you'd be reaching your goals? Yes or no? You either do or you don't. Then he goes on to say, if the answer is yes, and yet you're not hitting your goals, then it would seem that you have a conversion problem. If the answer is no, you don't have enough leads, I would tell you to put everything else on hold and go get more leads. Now, what does he mean by put everything else on hold and go get more leads? Remember a few moments ago, I told you I'm not that smart. I just plug and play. So when I hear put everything else on hold and go get more leads, guess what I do? I put everything on hold and go get more leads. Meaning I only have one job 
And until that job is done, everything else is a distraction. Everyone else is a distraction. And my job is to go get more leads. The issue of leads should always be at the forefront of your business consciousness. You should wake up every day focused. What am I going to do today to get more leads? It's the number one question you have every day. And it never changes. Even when you have a listing inventory of 10, 20 homes and you've got offers on five properties and you've got buyers that you're showing homes to and you're just crushing it, your number one goal every day is to go get more leads. All that other stuff can wait, literally. I'm not touching any of those offers that are in, in negotiation. They're gonna literally sit on my desk until I have completed lead generation. And I haven't completed lead generation until I've had 20 real estate conversations and scheduled at least one appointment, whichever comes last. Is this making sense, guys? Yes. Yes, okay, good. The catch is that lead generation is not something that can just be turned on and off. Here's the habit conversation. Listen closely. You don't just flip the switch on, off. Listen to what he says. The catch is that lead generation is not something that can just be turned on and off. Some very good lead generators make the mistake of turning it off when they think they have more business than they can handle. Lead generation stays on. It always stays on, even when the volume might appear overwhelming. Make it a habit. Make it a habit until when you don't do it, it feels weird. Is brushing your teeth a habit? Hopefully the answer is yes. <laughs> Have you ever been in the car driving to the office and thought, you know, I don't think I brushed my teeth. I'm going to turn around and go home and brush my teeth. Yes. Or am I the only one? Yeah. Make it a habit. Make it a habit so much so that when you don't do it, it feels weird. Prior to surgery last year, I was walking every day and I was walking six days a week, average of five miles a day. Not a big deal. Here's, a, here's the point though, guys, it became a habit. It became so much so a habit that I would just wake up part of my daily routine read the Bible, pray, meditate, read great books, throw on my gym shorts, my tennis shoes, and go for a walk. It was a habit. Now in November, I had surgery. And because I had surgery, I took a month off from walking. Do you think I just got back into the habit and started walking again? Say no. No. It was hard. Mm. Camille, I no. made every excuse not to walk. Now, what is this, February? So it took two months for me to recreate the habit. Now I just get up and do it. But it took me two months. This and you've been walking, you. you've been walking every day for years. You've been doing this for years, haven't you? A couple of years since I've met you. So I started two years ago because I had to, because the doctor yeah. told me if I didn't, I was gonna die. <laughs> That's motivation. And, right? And I lost a lot of weight and my blood pressure went down. My cholesterol went down. And that's why I did it. Not because I decided to be Forrest Gump. And then I made it fun, gamify it. And yeah. I set goals. Two years ago, the goal was to do 1,000 miles. Last year, the goal was to do 1,800 miles and walk from Boca to Key West and back. And this year, the goal is 312 gratitude walks. Mm -hmm. which is six days a week, 52 weeks is yeah. 312. And I'm tracking because I created a habit. It's not a big deal. All right, take yourself off mute. Talk to me, guys. That's all I've got for you today. Talk to me. What'd you hear? I hear that you struggle um, to do the everyday things too. Mm -hmm. um, 
And sometimes I feel like, you know, it's just me and what's wrong with me and why am I struggling to do what I need to do and I know I need to do it and why am I not doing it? So I, I don't know. The difference, I guess, is that you just do it. Because I created a habit, not because I'm better than anybody else. It's because I created a habit. Chad, I love what you wrote. I, I, I Chad Craig, I love what you wrote. Prayer is a habit and it feels weird if I don't. For those of you who don't have kids, how would you feel if your kids went a week without talking to you? Uh-huh. Do you ever think, do you ever think God's looking down and saying, where are you? Yeah. Why haven't you talked to me? I, I have a, something to share. Mm. I, I do every day uh, the prayer, the the journaling and everything. Mm -hmm. And one day I I have a dog and I do it every day, every day for, I don't know how long. One day I wake up and the dog was like crazy to go out. So I say, okay, he need to pee or something. So I wake up and I went because I didn't want him to do inside. And when I come back, my kids were awake. So I couldn't do nothing like pray and journaling, I forgot. So I started my day mm-hmm. and it was a day so messy, so crazy. When I finished my day, I was, oh my gosh, today I didn't pray. It was like different day than the regular days. It was like all was blocked, all was stuck, all was like crazy. So I say, I, I'm not going to forget again. Mm. So something like, I need to do it every day to be in peace, you know, to be smooth day. I'm gonna show you something. I, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Everybody hang on a moment because I'm gonna walk away for a second. It's gonna feel like, holy cow, where did he go? I promise I'm coming back. I'm gonna show you something. Okay, what is this, guys? What, what, what is this? What is that? A lamp. Right, 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 right. Now, hold on. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. All right. What happened? You're in, you're in darkness. What happens when I turn it on? You get light. You see the light. light. I've got light. Now, I unplug the lamp. What happens when I turn it on? Nothing. Nothing. Not plugged in. Yep. If you don't plug in, nothing's going to happen. It's that simple. It's that simple. You have to plug in. By the way, if I walk into a dark room and I turn on the light and nothing happens and I get mad at the light (laughs) because nothing happened and then I look down and go, oh, it's not plugged in. Is it the lamp's fault or is it my fault? Your fault. It's my fault because I didn't plug the lamp in. Guys, I hope you're getting that message. Yes. Great analogy. analogy. Right. So you asked what we were getting out of this, or what we got out of this reading that you did from, I think it was page 99 to 100. And, you know, um, we talk about leads and stuff like that. And until our company came up with that word pipeline, which Mm. is, it was a very important word because the people Mm. in my pipeline are the people who is going to give me business right now. And those are the people that I call once a week or I I touch once a week, a lot more than I will touch the other part of my database. But but that pipeline, segregating your, um, your leads into that immediate business pipeline made a big difference for me because now I know I have 
like 50 something people, buyers and sellers that I can actually go after and not go after, it makes it sound bad, but, um, <laughs> but you know, um, and just that's where my business is going to come from this year. I love it. And as long as I stay in touch with the rest of my database, more is going to come. And on my vision board, I have today is not a work day without lead generation. So every day yes. I have to do some type of lead generation. Yeah. What is work? <laughs> what <laughs> is work? Yeah. Listen to what is work. Work is. Listen to the definition of what is work. It's lead generation. That's it. Everything else takes care of itself. By the way, the only time that gets blocked in my calendar is family time, personal time, and lead generation time. Everything happens between when I wake up in the morning and 12 o'clock in the afternoon. The rest of the day is open. And by the way, when I do th everything effectively before 12 o'clock, the rest of the day fills up. Those are their pipeline meetings, Camille. Yeah. It's because you did what you're supposed to do before 12 o'clock in, in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. All right, one more, one more. We got time for two. Give me two more ahas and we're gonna jump. Okay. On and off lead generation. Yes. That's Say it again. Say it again, Michael. Yeah, lead generation needs to stay on. You can't turn it on and off. Yes. I struggle with that because I'm pretty good at lead gen. Um, and I'm a little bit, you know, like, well, I'm not going to say anything. Let's just say everyone struggles with that. They do. Yeah. It's normal. If, if it wasn't normal, he wouldn't talk about it in the book. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, John, because some of us turn it off, is why we created all these companies who are selling us the leads. Yeah. There you, there you go. There you go. That's a great aha. If I did my job, if, oh boy, this is good. If all of you did your job, if all of us, the entire real estate community did our job, Zillow wouldn't exist. Exactly. Hmm. So I got an aha today. To my, my aha is I'm normal. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to be above average, so I need to definitely. But it's good to hear I'm normal. That's great. <laughs> That's I great. love it. I love it. We're going we're gonna to close with that, right? Cool. <laughs> so awesome. So awesome. All right. I've got what is work today, guys. Time to get to work. What is work? Work is 20 conversations, not 19, not 18, not 17 conversations. Because when you have 17 conversations because it's close enough and you settle, you don't have the 18th conversation, which could have been a million dollar listing that you didn't get because you didn't have the conversation. Focus on care calls, not sale calls. Always lead with gratitude. Thank you for taking my call. I appreciate you. Bring value to every single conversation. Every day as you're making your 20 contacts, your 20 real estate conversations, focus on getting an appointment, getting a referral, adding somebody to your database. Find somebody today who is thinking of selling their home, whether it's next week, 30 days from now, a month from now, that's the same thing as 30 days, six months or a year from now, it doesn't matter because you're going to need listings a year from now. Meet with at least one person every single day who's thinking of selling their home. Over the next 52 weeks, you're going to create 250 opportunities in your pipeline, that was for you, Camille, and then follow up forever because you reject rejection and no is not a word that lives in your vocabulary. No simply means not yet. Remember that people will never change their mind, but what they will do is make a new decision based on new information. And because you're following up forever, you're going to create an opportunity for them to make a new decision, which will happen when you've created emotional proximity. And that new decision is going to be to, oh my gosh, I'm out of breath, hire you. Make it a great day. Thank, Thank you. you John. John, you have something today, right? Uh, Thank you. 10 to 11? I'm on the calendar a bunch today. I do have a class from 10 to 11. You're absolutely right, Shirley. I also have one from 1 to 2. 10 to 11 is 36, 12, 3. It's a lead generation class. And then 1 to 2 is systemizing lead generation. 
both Keller Williams University classes. All right, guys. Thank you. Make Thank it you. a great day. See everybody tomorrow morning. Yeah.